Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So today, probably about half an hour or so ago, Cholton released their retain list for the 2021-22 season and it is fair to say there's some interesting decisions. We're going to talk about it, we're going to discuss it, we're going to give my thoughts on the players that are staying at the club, the players that are leaving and where that leaves us going into the 2022-23 season, where after all, a massive rebuild is, of course, at hand. So let me begin by reading the retain list. Jake Forstakowski will continue with Cholton next season after the club triggered a one-year extension in his contract. Forstakowski, who joined the Addicts in January 2017, was the club's Player of the Year for the 2020-21 season and explained how pleased he was to see his stay at the Valley extended. He said, I'm delighted to be staying. It's an exciting time for the club and I can't wait to get going. I believe it is going to be a great season. I wish I had your optimism, Jake. Uh, Director of Recruiting Steve Gallen said, I'm pleased we are keeping Jake with us. All the Charlton fans know what a good player he is and he's a great character to have around the club too. He's been working hard to get back to full fitness. We've seen glimpses this season and now he has a full season to get his head down and get back to the level we know he can play. The article then reveals the other players that have been offered new contracts, very similar to Forster Kasky, uh, players that have had one-year extensions triggered. Those three players being Ryan Innes, Josh Davison and Nathan Harness. They have had one-year options extended. Meanwhile, George Dobson, Corey Blackett-Taylor and Ashley Maynard Brewer are set to enter the final year of their contracts and the club have an option to extend each of those contracts by a year at the end of the 2022-23 season. Gallen said, we have a group of players in place and our focus this summer is adding further quality to the squad. Jason Pearce has been offered a contract coaching in the club's academy, which of course we knew that was reported uh, by the South London Press recently. While the club are in ongoing negotiations with the representatives of Ben Purrington about a potential new playing contract, the club can confirm the following players will leave the club following the expiration of their current contracts. Chris Gunter, which of course we knew, Connor Washington, certainly one of the more interesting ones on there. Adam Matthews, Ben Watson, of course we knew that. Pape Soare, again, knew that. And Stephen Henderson. The club can confirm the following players will leave the club following the expiration of their loan deals, which of course was Akin Famwo, Noel John, Elliot Lee, Jonathan Lecco, Juan Castillo and Mason Burstow. The club would like to wish every player who is leaving the best of luck for the future and thank them for their efforts during their time with Charlton. So there we have it. There is the retain list for the 2021-22 season. And now let's jump straight into my thoughts. It's definitely controversial. There are definitely some controversial decisions in there. Uh, first of all, I'm quite surprised that there's no update in terms of academy players. We don't exactly know... Um, which academy players are staying, which are going. In terms of the players that have been confirmed to be staying, of course, there are four players that are staying, and that is, of course, Jake Fulstakowski, Ryan Innes, Josh Davison, and Nathan Harness. Now, if you recall back to the video that I did um, speaking about the out-of-contract players, of course, there were 17 uh, senior out-of-contract players um, that were going to be leaving the club upon the expiration of those deals. And the two players that I pinpointed as, like, maybes, were Forster Kasky and Innes because they were injury prone. Now, the thing with both of them is that I, I do stand by this, right? I stand by it. Innes gets a lot of pelters, especially. But the thing is, when Innes plays, he is a good centre half at this level. He is. It, I don't think it can really be argued with. But the problem is, he never is fit. That is a, a big problem. And that is why I thought that Innes would not be offered a contract. And to be honest, I am quite surprised that Innes was offered a new deal, especially considering his uh, uh, latest stint in the playing squad uh, from his return from injury, where he was an absolute shambles. I mean, summed up perfectly with the red card that he got against AFC Wimbledon, which was an absolutely brain-dead tackle. Uh, a tackle made by a player that clearly doesn't have his head in the game and his head's not in the right place. You know, his heart isn't in it for this club. So I thought Innes would be well and truly on his way. And... Again, I refer back to the uh, the out of contract video I made. I said, Forster, Kasky and Innes, maybe it's time to move on from both of them because they are both injury prone players, but they're both staying. They are both staying at the club for next season. Now, Forster, Kasky, 
there aren't really much complaints. We know exactly what kind of player Paul Stokowski is. It's just a shame that over the last few years, he's been absolutely ravaged with injury, of course. 2021, uh, 2021, sorry. He won the player of the year with good reason. When he is fit over the course of a full season, he is instrumental in the middle of the pitch. And I think going into next season, he will be, I think, nailed on starting 11 as it stands with the amount of midfielders or the quality of midfielders, should I say, that we have in the middle of the park. So for Stokowski, not really many complaints as much as I said, you know, he's injury prone and he's not played that many games this season, which is understandable because he's recovered from another ACL injury. But yeah, not bothered whatsoever with uh, Jake Stayen. I'm happy to keep him on board with the club and I'm glad we've extended that. As for Innes, again, as I have just said, he is a good player when he plays. He just never does. And that is a major issue. Now, whether we're going to keep Innes on as a backup option or as a starting 11 option, I have absolutely no idea. But we really need to keep him fit if he's going to stay. Because if he has another injury ravaged season next year, I can't justify him staying any further. Now, the other two... Davison and Harness. Now, as for Harness, he obviously will be our third choice goalkeeper for next season behind uh, Craig McGillivray and the returning Ashley Maynard Brewer, who of course spent the uh, season with Ross County. Quite surprised we decided to keep Harness. Obviously, he did play one game in, in the league this season, the final day of the season against Ipswich. Not the greatest League One debut for him, shipping in four goals on the final day, but I can't really... Uh, blame him for that. He was chucked in the deep end, I guess you could say. You know, Henderson, for whatever reason, wasn't picked and McGillivray was off with an illness after contracting COVID, I do believe. So, can't really blame Harness for that. But yeah, I think in all honesty, I think Harness will either be loaned out or we've given him a new contract to sell him on for a fee. But I'm not entirely sure the whole story with that. And then probably the most controversial out of all of them, in my opinion, is Josh Davison. Now, I think what's causing the most divide amongst the fan base when it comes to Davison is the fact that he's been given a contract and Connor Washington has been released. Now, I'm going to speak a bit about Connor Washington uh, in a bit more detail in a second. But as for Davison, it's a strange one. It, it, it's a very strange one for the fact that we've decided to keep him. The thing with Davison is, right, he's gone on loan to Swindon and he's done very well. He's had a fantastic loan spell at League Two level. He's made that league his own. I think in 20 appearances for Swindon, he's bagged nine goals, which is almost a goal every other game, which is a very, very good record to have at League Two level. And of course, he is in the playoff semi-finals for Swindon. They're playing against Port Vale or Mansfield, one of the two. I guess you could make the argument that over the years when we have loaned him out, he has developed as a player and he is slowly but surely getting better. He struck me as a striker that couldn't find the back of the net but gave 110%. Kind of like a Josh Parker, but I mean, at least compared to Josh Parker, he scored goals, I think. I think making that uh, comparison to Josh Parker is a bit of an insult to Davison, but yeah. <sighs> It's, it's it's a weird one. It's a weird one we've kept him. Are, are we going to keep him as a backup option? Are we actually intending to start him? I don't know. Or even are we trying to loan him out again or sell him? I don't know what we're going to do. But whether Davison can do it at League One level is to be seen. And it's going to be interesting to see what he can do next season. I think really for Davison, this season is make or break. Jason Pearce, as we know, has been offered a coaching role. We already knew this, uh, the South London Press did report that he won't be offered a playing contract. Of course, um, he was offered an extension at the end of last season. And along with that contract, there was an option to take on a coaching role. Now, the club has decided not to give him a playing role and they have decided to offer him that coaching role, which unless Pierce wants to play on for uh, a couple more years, I think he will take on that role. I don't think he will play on much longer. I think he will announce his retirement as a player and he will stay at the club. But if he is to leave and part company, it would be a shame. You know, I've given a lot of um, pelters to Pierce. I've criticised him a lot over the years, but you cannot deny that he has been a very good servant for this football club. And this season, to be honest with you, I think he's been one of our better performing players. I thought he played really well this season, all things considering. You know, the fact that he was brought in as a uh, rotation player under Nigel Adkins, a player that wasn't exactly going to play that many games, ended up being, in my opinion, probably our second best defender behind Sam Lavelle. I think he really did have a good season. You know, when we felt that he was past it now. He came up and proved a lot of us wrong. So I've got to give full respect to Pierce for, for that. And then as for Ben Purrington, who we are in negotiations to give him a new contract. So we haven't agreed one with him yet. However, we do intend to keep him, which again, I, I am completely fine with. I completely agree with that. Um, whether we decide to play him regularly, though, is another question. We only have one left back if Purrington uh, signs a new contract. In fact, we've only got one full back 
if Purrington decides to sign that new contract. Now, in terms of the players that have been released, in total, we've released six players of the out-of-contract lot, and of course, all six of the loans have gone. So that is 12 players, potentially 13, that could be leaving if Purrington decides not to sign the new contract. So in terms of the released contracted players, of course, Chris Gunter, Ben Watson, and Pape Soiree, we already knew. Zero complaints whatsoever, to be honest with you, with all three of them going. Chris Gunter was just absolutely shocking, absolutely terrible. One of the worst fullbacks I've seen play for this football club, period. I just think that, again, I must have mentioned it so many times, the fact that he's consistently picked for the Wales national team is an absolute disgrace. But I don't know where he's going to end up. I don't know who is going to be stupid enough to take him, to be honest with you. I could really see him going to League 2, to be honest with you. I don't can't really see any League 1 club taking him but yeah not really surprised by that one there are early indications that ben watson is set to announce his retirement that's not been confirmed yet but that is what is being rumored so if watson is to retire obviously he's had a very very um illustrious career he's had a very fantastic career played for some really good clubs obviously won the fa cup with wigan had a really good spell at nottingham forest shame it didn't really work out at charlton uh, but that is what it is, when it? That's football. And then as for Pape Soiree, that was just such a bizarre transfer to begin with, really. like We en ended the summer transfer window without signing a left-back, decided to rush into one, go into the free agent market, basically picked up any stragglers that was there. Soiree was the one we went for. He didn't play a single game of football last season, came into this club and was just... Uh, again, I'm hesitant to say it, but one of the worst fullbacks I've seen play for this club, an absolutely shocking bit of business. And to be honest with you, I think he left the club long ago. He was well and truly out of the squad way before uh, this was even announced. I mean, in January, we tried to get rid of him for free. We literally didn't want a fee for him. We just wanted to get rid of him. So that told you really that we were going to get rid of him. As for the other three, Stephen Henderson, of course, was another player that we brought in uh, after the summer transfer window closed. Again, not massively surprised by this one. Didn't play much football. I think played a couple of times in the FA Cup. Played two games in the league against Crewe and Cheltenham. Made the same mistake in both games that led to goals. So you could clearly see that he didn't really have it anymore. Uh, than what he previously was. Don't get me wrong, I do like Henderson, obviously, from his previous spell at the club. I thought he was very good, but he just clearly doesn't have it anymore. And yeah, not massively surprised that we decided to release him, especially with the calibre of players that we have in that position already. Adam Matthews, yeah, not massively concerned with that one either, to be honest. I think progressively, as the years have gone on, Matthews has gone through a bit of a decline. And I think, to be honest with you, I'm very glad that we've decided to cut it quits this time because over the last three years, you know, Matthews has constantly waited in terms of bringing in a new in terms of getting a new contract you know he's kind of weighed up his options realized that no one wants him and he thought oh fuck it i'll go to charlton and uh we've had that for the past two seasons really and i think as i said over the years progressively he's just got worse so yeah i, I can't really complain for the fact that we've decided to pull the plug this time on matthews i think this season was his worst charlton season to date just kept getting skinned defensively did have a couple of good defensive moments and don't get me wrong going forward I think he is a very good player he can play the wing back position quite well it's just the defensive side of the game was proved to be very weak this season so yeah not really surprised we've decided to release him and that of course does mean that we have no right backs and in fact no full backs if Purrington doesn't sign a contract as I did just mention now the biggest name on that list that is going is of course Connor Washington so what do I think about Connor going? Now, again, it is a strange one. What people are mostly complaining about is the fact that we've let Connor go and decided to keep Davison. If you take a look at all of the players that we have released, they are all ageing players, all of them. You know, Gunter is like 32, Matthews is nearly 30, Watson's 36, Soiree, I think, is 31, Henderson, I think, is 33, and then Washington is also nearly 30. So they are all ageing players. Now, the thing with Connor, right, He's reached double figures in both seasons. Don't get me wrong, I do like Connor. I, I am a fan of him and it is, I think from a sentimental value, I am a bit disappointed that we've decided to let him go. However, there, there was a lot of flaws to Connor's game and I think a lot of people will agree with me. You know, a very pacey player, don't get me wrong, a player with a lot of speed, quite nimble and he's able to, you know, get forward and have some shots away. But I've said this so many times over, the, over this year, how many one-on-one -on -one opportunities has he missed this season? He's missed... So many key chances. And if he'd have put those in the back of the net, he probably would have bagged a lot more. If we were to keep Washington, I would have kept him as a squad player because I don't see him as a 20-goal-a-season striker. So 
the way you could look at it is that Washington getting rid of him, obviously we've got Davison obviously being contracted, we've given him a new deal. And then of course, Anike and Stockley. Getting rid of Washington has now allowed us the opportunity to bring in another attacker. And realistically, looking at those options, if we were to give Washington a contract and kept him as well, none of those four strikers, Stockley, Anike, Washington or Davison, convince me as a 20-goal season striker. So we're getting rid of Washington. We've got the opportunity to bring in another one and we've got to go all out for this one. And we've got to try and bring in a 20-goal season striker. I do wish Connor all the best and also the other players that are being released apart from Gunter, Watson and Suarez because they were absolutely shocking. Now, in terms of the six players that have, of course, left the club um, on loan from their loan spells, of course, Fanwo going back to Norwich, John to Tottenham, Lee to Luton, Lecco to Birmingham, and then Castillo and Mason Burstow back to Chelsea. Now, in all honesty, none of them should really be coming back to the club on permanent basis or another loan spell, with the possible, very possible exception of Akin Famwo. Now, Famwo, it's, it's an interesting one because obviously we do have the option to make this one a permanent deal. And it's going to be interesting to see if we are going to take up that option. I think he would be a useful option to have as centre-half. But let's face it, he didn't exactly have the most convincing of seasons. He was quite inconsistent this year compared to the previous. And obviously, he played a lot more games uh, than uh, last season. He spent in and out of injury. This season, he, he stayed relatively fit, I think, for most of the season. But... Yeah, it was very inconsistent. So it's going to be interesting to see if we do decide to bring him up permanently. Personally, I think we will. Knowing the club, I think we will sign him permanently. And as for the other five, I mean, we can happily close the door on them. And I do not want to see any of them play for Charlton again. Noel John did not play a single minute of football for us. Another prime example of a Premier League youngster that comes to this football club and doesn't play. And he's supposed to be one of the most up-and-coming talents in England, and he doesn't play. He was back at Tottenham before the first, before the final game of the season against Ipswich, which is just absolutely ridiculous. And I, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Like, if we're going to loan in Premier League youngsters this season, or this upcoming season, we've got to play them. Simple as that. Elliot Lee faded away massively towards, like, midway through the season. Faded away massively. Started really good. Three goals, four assists. I think I actually got two goals, four assists before we had that fade. He scored again against Wigan uh, later on in the season. But yeah, dropped off massively. Doesn't really inspire him as a player to keep hold of. I fully expect Luton to be selling him in the transfer window. I mean, they're in the playoffs to get to the Premier League, for fuck's sake. He ain't going to the Prem, is he? So yeah, I don't think we should sign Lee back. Jonathan Lecco, one of the most overrated Charlton players I've seen play for this club. Honestly, absolutely disastrous season for him. For what this season was supposed to be, come into League One and was supposed to you know, have a breakthrough year, I guess you could say. Yes, he was played out of position multiple times. Yes, he got an injury. But he hasn't exactly inspired any of us to say that he should be playing for us again next season. So yeah, close the door on Lecco. Never see him a championship again. Castillo, same situation with John. Barely played. At least he played a couple of times. In the games he did play... Uh, I thought he was all right, but I mean, he didn't exactly break his way into the team, did he? I mean, Blackett Taylor was getting ahead of him and so was Purrington and probably rightly so, to be honest with us. So yeah, would not bring him back either. And then as for Mason Burstow, I mean, we knew that one already. I mean, obviously he joined Chelsea in January. A bit disappointed with Burstow, to be honest with you, because while he would like to say that his head wasn't turned by the move and, you know, he kept his full focus at Charlton, it was very clear that his head was turned and, he, and that he wasn't in... Um, the right state of mind, you know, his heart, in my opinion anyway, wasn't truly with Cholton after he made that move because I felt he was quite poor, to be honest with you, when he came back to Cholton. And I think really we should have shut the door on him and we should have said, yeah, go to Chelsea, play the second half of the season with the academy and we can grow somebody else. But yeah, a bit disappointed with Burstow's second half of the season. Of course, he's had a very break, good breakthrough year. We've got to admit that, you know, he has done very well. But I think the fee that we ended up getting for him, I think we've pulled Chelsea's pants down. And I think we've got to run to the hills with that. We got a really good deal out of that. While some people would like to say that we didn't exactly do enough. But yeah, I think the calibre of Burstow, especially from what we saw of him in the second half of the season, doesn't suggest to me that he is worthy of being a £1.7 million player. Wish him all the best. Of course, it is a life-changing move for him and I wish him all the best. Now, where does that leave us going into the transfer window? Now, of course... Like I said in the previous video, you know, with Jackson getting sacked in the video before that, there is a massive rebuild ahead for this club. Looking at the retain list, 12 players have confirmed to have left, potentially a 13th if Purrington is not to renew his contract. And of course, the biggest problem out of all of them, we do not have a manager. So a big concern for me is that 
a fair amount of the players that we had this season, the season just gone, you know, finishing 13th, a lot of it is still there. A lot of it is still there. Now, of course, we we don't exactly know what we're going to do in terms of players that we're going to sell. We don't know if we're going to sell anybody, but in terms of the players that are contracted to the club, I'll read you to them now. So we've got three goalkeepers. Don't think we need another one. You know, we've got Craig McGill of Ray. We've got Ashley Maynard Brewer, who if we rate him as much as we do, We've got to give him a shot in the league this season. We have got to get him involved in this team and he's got to have a breakthrough year this year. It's no ifs or buts, really. We've got to start playing him. And of course, the other one is Nathan Harness. I don't know what we're going to do with him, whether we're going to loan him or sell him. No idea. He's our third choice goalkeeper. So goalkeeper isn't massively a concern for us going into next season. With Gunter and Matthews both getting released, we need two right-backs. We've got no right-backs to the club whatsoever. Whether we're going to bring through someone from the academy, I have no idea. Bottom line is we need two right-backs. And the same applies for left-back. If Perrington is to sign a new contract, he is the only senior full-back contracted to the club. So we need, well, a replacement for Soiree. That is evident. We need competition for him. So that is already three players we need. We've got two centre-backs contracted to the club, Sam Laville and Ryan Innes. In terms of the midfield area, we have got a fair amount of midfielders already. And to be honest with you, midfield, for me anyway, is not massively a concern in terms of adding to it. Now, obviously, we've got Dobson. Could potentially do with some cover for Dobson with Watson going. And then in terms of central midfield, you've got Forster Kasky, Scott Fraser, Alex Gilby, Albie Morgan. And then you're probably wondering where Sean Clare is. I'm mentioning him here because... He is naturally a central midfielder. Now, we don't know going into this season, whoever the new manager is going to be, where Clare is going to play. Is he going to play centre-half or is he going to go back to his natural position in central midfield? I'd imagine Clare is probably going to say, oh yeah, I'm naturally a number eight. I can play in central midfield, but I also played centre-half. So do with that information what you will. But I would like to see what Clare can do in the centre of midfield because realistically, Albie Morgan... As as much as we can say, yeah, he's the top of city, he's top of our assists for this season. In my opinion, had a very underwhelming year. Alex Gilby massively disappointed. Scott Fraser, we're not exactly going to get rid of him. He is a long term project, but yeah, wasn't exactly convinced by what I saw from him. But then again, obviously, he's had an injury recently. He's had COVID. He's had illnesses as well. So. We'll, we'll let him off with that because, of course, he is a long-term signing. And obviously, Forster Kasky, who we've discussed already, is, without a shadow of a doubt, in my opinion, first name on the team sheet And when it comes to the midfield, as well as George Dobson. So, midfield, not massively a concern unless we decide to move on players. Uh, could potentially move on Gilby. Morgan could loan out as well. There's a lot of decisions we could make. We have three wingers contracted to the club. That, of course, being Jai Simi, Blackett Taylor, and not to forget... Charlie Kirk, who did return to the club today following the expiration of his loan at Blackpool. Now, it is to be seen what we're going to do with Kirk. He's going to be one of the most interesting players to look at going into this season. Now, it did come out recently that Blackpool are still interested in bringing Kirk back. And of course, Kirk did come out recently uh, during the loan spur, in fact, and said that he wanted to move there permanently. So to be honest with you, I fully expect Kirk to join Blackpool permanently. But in the unlikely event that he does stay at Charlton, this is going to be a big season for him. This has to be a big, big season for Kirk. He's got to play in the right position under the right system because if he does play in the right position, in the right system, under the right manager, he will be good for us. And I still stand by that. He is a good player. Evident from his loan spell at Blackpool. Three assists in nine games and assist every other game. Probably not brilliant return, but... You know, he was getting games at championship level. I, I still think I still think the loan in general was a very bizarre move. But yeah, in terms of wingers, you know, if we do keep all three of them, to be honest with you, I would sell Dry See Me and Blackett Taylor. We've got to keep hold of him at all costs. So we could strengthen in the wing. Um, we could strengthen out wide as well. And then, of course, up front, Stockley, Anike and Davison. So we need one more striker. I don't think we're going to sell uh, Stockley or Anike. What we're going to do with Davison, I have no idea, but... We need to strengthen in the attack as well and find a proven goal scorer that can get us 20 goals a season. You know, like I said with Connor Washington, the fact that he's going is very surprising. However, if we do improve on him and can get a 20 goal a season striker, which let's face it, Washington wasn't, we can say we've done well with that. So looking at our team, there is still weaknesses, you know, amongst the players that we have decided to keep and the players that are under contract. As I said, I have no idea what we're going to do in terms of players that we're going to loan out, in terms of players we're going to sell. But the clear thing is... There is a lot of work that needs to be done. Right back, left back, centre half, out wide and striker are probably the main key areas we need to strengthen. Like I said, midfield and goalkeeper, we've got several players in those positions already. I mean, we've got three goalkeepers and we've got 
four central midfielders, five if you include Claire, and one defensive midfielder. So I guess we could add an attacking midfielder into there as well, a defensive midfielder to cover for Dobson, and maybe whack another central midfielder in there if we sell other options. Because we need to do this early. We need to do this as early as possible. We made way too many mistakes in summer last year, took our time, was patient, went with the right players, and ended up spending the third biggest budget in the league, you know, with the third biggest spenders, in the complete wrong areas. So we need to spend it in the right areas this time. We need to get it absolutely bang on. And yeah, I, I, I don't know really, I don't know. It's gonna be a very, very interesting summer, but that team that we have right now, especially looking at the players that are contracted to this club, like I said, a lot of those players, a lot of that squad, that finished 13th this season is still there. And that is a major concern for me. So we do need to find some inspiring talents, bring in some key players to help us out and potentially weed out some more Deadwood. Because like I said, there are still Deadwood within the contracted players. But let's see what we do, man. Let's see what we do. It's going to be a very interesting summer up ahead. Massive rebuild ahead. But let's see what Sangod has up his sleeve. So... That is it for this video, guys. That is my reaction to Charlton Athletics 2021-22 retain list. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. And if you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel, and turn on those post notifications so you are notified of every time I upload a new video. Thank you all so much for the support on the previous two videos. I've gained a fair amount of subscribers over the last few days, which is absolutely ridiculous. So thank you all for that. What do you guys think of the retain list? Let me know in the comments below. What do you think about the players that are staying? What do you think about the players that are leaving? Big summer ahead, man. Massive, massive summer ahead. And we need to sort this out sooner rather than later. This has been Tyler Ronaldson. Have a nice day. And I will see you all in the next video, which will be out within the next coming days. Take it easy. Stay safe. And I'll see you all later.